The Titanic was really a cover for a highly classified military operation to investigate two nuclear submarines that we lost during the Cold War with all hands, the USS Thresher and the USS Scorpion. They ironically turned out to be on either side of where the Titanic was lost. And quite honestly, had that not been the case, you wouldn't be looking at the guy that found the Titanic. The Navy wanted complete 100% photo documentation of both wreck sites and to answer some questions. What are the nuclear reactors doing? What's the status of the nuclear weapons? Is there any evidence Soviets have been there? Well, I said to both the Secretary of the Navy, John Lehman, and Admiral Thunman, who was my boss as a naval officer, well, what if we use the Titanic as the cover? I thought it was a cockamamie story. I mean, find the Titanic. And I said, well, it'd be a great cover, wouldn't it? Finally said, thumbs up. I told him, do whatever you want. Just don't spend any more money. Boy, did I work fast. We pretty well knew what happened to the Thresher. We mapped her a year earlier. They knew very little about the Scorpion. It took me about a week to get there and map it. We mapped it extensively, and there was no evidence of human remains. I mean, that would have been tough, but no. The reactors were intact, so that was good news. There were no other indications of uh, something amiss other than the, the submarine had gone down and it had imploded. As soon as the Navy was satisfied, we headed northwest for the Titanic. I had 12 days to hunt. But I had learned something from the Thresher and Scorpion that I couldn't tell anyone, because both submarines imploded before they came to the bottom. So on their way down, the pressure hulls went, and that implosive event is a gigantic explosion. And it just blew the submarines apart. But when I was mapping it, we realized that the heavy stuff went down like a bowling ball. Reactors, boom. But then the lighter stuff was a big, long line. And I went, didn't the Titanic do the same thing? So let's not look for the big pieces of Titanic, because they're only that big. Let's look for the debris, which meant I could space my search lines much wider apart. But Titanic did not lie where she was thought to be. Days of futile search dragged on. How close were you to failure, Lauren? Well, I had, I was reaching the point of where I thought we'd failed. And I, I thought we had. And I was going, I went back to my room and we had the watch going, it was a mid-watch. Everything happens on the midnight watch, 12 to four, I don't know why. Everything important occurs right around midnight. Wreckage. Bingo! Yeah! Did we sleep with? Somebody ought to go get Bob's. And I went in, and there it was. The, I mean, the boiler was on the screen. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'll be. We were jumping up and down. We were patting one another on the back. And then someone looked at the clock in the command center and said, she sinks in 20 minutes. It was 2 in the morning. She sank at 2.20. And that innocent comment just grounded us. And we realized, you have finally put the rest where these souls were lost. And everyone filed out. And it was a moment of silence, because we were there. And that was pretty, pretty powerful. This afternoon, I talked by ship to shore radio with the chief scientist on the Titanic expedition, Dr. Robert Ballard. What kind of condition does the Titanic look in over? Uh, superb condition. How would you describe the effects on you personally of this whole experience over these years? Uh, 
You're welcome, please, Dr. Robert Ballard. My life had changed after that. I went from being a scientist who no one ever recognized to not being able to go unnoticed again. Bob Ballard did something that people have been trying to do for 73 years, and that's discover the Titanic's resting place, and you did it. What a dramatic, magnificent moment. Summer 1988. A converted trawler named Storella leaves Spain, bound for the North Atlantic. After we found the the Titanic, Natural Geographic naturally said, well, let's do another one of those. So we went for the Nazi battleship Bismarck. Certainly, one of the reasons for finding the Bismarck was to take a little edge off the Titanic. When I did the Titanic, no one believed I would find it. Now no one believes I won't find the Bismarck, and I don't think I preferred when they didn't think I would find it. Should have been up in here. And I didn't find it. I, mean, that's the best guess. I failed. I didn't find it. And I said, I looked straight at the lens, just as I'm doing now, and I said, round one to the Bismarck. I know where it isn't. Give me another shot. A year after coming up empty-handed, Ballard prepares to renew his search aboard the Star Hercules. 